Hello, everybody. I'm Lisa Burwell, your host of V Speaks Conversations with Heart and Soul. We are in season two today in studio with Megan Trent from the CVHN as executive director of the Children's Volunteer Health Network, 18 years old this year. And Megan took over the position a year ago and is doing a fabulous job. Megan, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having us. I'm excited to speak a little bit about Children's Volunteer Health Network. Yes, I know it's a passion of yours and We've known each other for, boy, when was that when you were at um, Alice? We're doing the math. It's about a decade it's now a, a and decade. a lot of personas. <laughs> yes, a lot of different different hats that have been worn. And your background um, has always impressed me in everything that you've done. And when I learned that you had been named the executive director with your energy and chutzpah and uh, talent, I was super proud that you had landed that position. Well, thank you so much. It's, um, it's a blessing. And honestly, I'm grateful every day. Um, you bring a lot of energy to what you do and to be allowed to bring that energy in service of our mission to help children and to expand access to healthcare. Um, I'm, I just, I say my thanks every evening for what we're allowed to do. Truly, truly. And, and the board that um, has been assembled is, you know, second to none. I'm a proud board member this year myself and stand in awe of the passion and the dedication that everyone sits around that room brings to the table with genuine um, care and passion for making a change. You know, CVHN has been so fortunate over the 18 years to bring together, I think, some of the most talented, passionate, caring members of our community um, from our internal team. You know, we have a small team. We're a nonprofit. Um, so it's eight people. Five of them are clinicians, like bringing our services straight to the children. So it's a little office of three trying to make all this happen. Our board has, you know, talent in spades. Um, so it takes, it takes a village, but our village is one of the best. Correct. So talk about the mission statement. Um, you know, the beginning, the Genesis 18 years ago, what was the need, like the, the first need that was recognized in the community to form this organization? You know, it's so with just 18 years ago, CVHN really started with one child. Um, and I think even in our best days, we think about it that granularly. We're helping, you know, one child at a time. Um, Trisha Northcutt and Jane Bear and the Point Washington Church community um, started with seeing the need for dental help um, for a boy named Tyler who was being bullied and, you know, because of the state of his teeth. Um, they saw that there were affordability issues, access issues partnered together to get a doctor to come in and really change his life. Um, and as this community grows, the need grows so much for access to health care, uh, the, the ability to afford health care for our families. So we're still really operating in that same space. Um, but now our mission extends to two mobile dental clinics that serve nine elementary schools for Okaloosa and Walton County. We're expanding to include mental wellness services for that same population. Um, and really going back to our name with Children's Volunteer Health Network, finding ways to refer children that need help and get them the help they need in all in all aspects of care. Right. In our um, area, demographics that, you know, by all standards is a high um, level of uh, standard of living here. It is amazing to me. Two things. One, how many exceptional nonprofit organizations there are for those in need. And two, the need that's there with now what is turning into sort of the haves and have nots. And I am so amazed that so many different uh, nonprofit organizations catering to different needs exist in our community. And I don't know another community that gives back like this, that pours into so many need meeting opportunities and what you're doing um, with the, with the nonprofit organization that you're spearheading is doing, it's giving people, children, a leg up to be able to present themselves to the world confidently and to be able to thrive. And it's so important. You know, we do live in, um, a very first impression apparent society and to equip them with feeling good about themselves and smiling and being able to feel good about themselves is something that you can't buy. I mean, the self-confidence that 
you're instilling in them. And I know now that you're branching out to other areas, uh, mental health, um, and just like trying to reach anything that you can do. And the, the buses that, um, you have right now are just really, uh, state of the art. And where did the mobility come from? Was that always, um, part of the ethos that you would go to them? It's such a good question because accessibility is as important to our families as affordability. We did have a brick and mortar clinic at one point right in Santa Rosa Beach. And what we found was the families struggled to be able to get there. When you think about the things that are obstacles to care for, you know, the working families. And as you stated, you know, sometimes the disparity here um, is, is a bit surprising to someone as they come into the area and travel the whole of Walton County or the whole of Okaloosa County. Um, and we're growing. And as we're growing the population and, and the outlying areas grows. Um, so mobility became as important to getting the care to the children as making sure that the cost was underwritten. Um, so we had a mobile clinic that was sort of serving some of the schools alongside the brick and mortar. And when we looked at the statistics. We were much more successful when we could deliver the care immediately to the children than counting on the families to come and be able to attend the appointments. And so we did make the decision to go full into mobility and really underline the accessibility part of our mission. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's been a, a blessing to families mm -hmm. for sure. Well, standing in front of the second bus just about six months ago and just looking at that, um, you know, a medical facility on wheels on, on steroids for sure. And how many children are served with the two buses. So right now between, um, we do nine elementary schools between the two counties and we see an average of 1100, uh, 1100 children per year. Um, and what we're able to do now with the second bus, um, which is just a thing of beauty, um, probably one mm -hmm. of the things that I think our history can be the proudest of right now. It is actually a fully equipped restorative clinic. So where our children were first receiving hygiene and preventative services, now when we see that they have um, an urgent care need, we can address it immediately. Um, and there's a dentist on staff and there's a, you know, a team that we can take them from that hygiene and take care of getting them out of pain or uh, addressing things in the moment. So mm -hmm. um, that facility is something that I, I know couldn't have even been in our dream 18 years ago. Yeah, that's fascinating. So... To do what you do, you need to raise funds. And that is um, the, the honest and sad truth about doing good for the community. Uh, it costs money. So you have a robust fundraising program, and your, your lead event is coming up in we are. March. March 10th talk, and 11th. Okay, talk about the big event and, the, and last year and what that meant to you all and how successful that was. It's interesting to think about the last couple of years and how events, which are the lifeblood of any nonprofit organization, um, as they faded into, you know, the fears of COVID, um, we were watching <laughs> and trying to think creatively. Um, so last year, we introduced a new signature event, Soiree on the Bay. Um, it is held at the beautiful Dugas Estate, um, outside, right on the water. And we want to make something different, but also intimate. Um, you know, it is a very exclusive, you know, smaller scale event. So I think you really get to spend time during the weekend um, enjoying. Um, so we are doing Soiree on the Bay Act 2 this year. Um, last year, we were thrilled to raise over $300,000 uh, that supported our mission. Um, when you come to Soiree, you'll get to see the beautiful mobile clinic um, and know about a little more of the story of what the funds support. Um, we have some of the best vintners. Um, Cafe 30A, David Kessler, is bringing, I've heard so far, 18 vintners um, wow. uh, to uh, have some of the best wine, spirits, food. We have the Tip Tops Band, which if anyone goes and looks at our photos. Um, so we're very excited to bring yeah. back the best of and grow that event this year. Awesome. And tell people how they can uh, get tickets or sponsor. So, yes, we still have some sponsorship opportunities. Um, they're filling up quickly um, and tickets are on sale now. You can go to cvhnkids.org um, and kind of get all the basic information or my contact. Um, you can find me anywhere if you want to attend or sponsor Soiree. Oh, good. Well, we'll put that up in the credits at the end too so that people can make sure that they attend. And last year was great and we survived because we... <laughs> 
was a monsoon, but we still made it happen, right? Whoever would like to sponsor the weather this yes, year, yes. we're Please going to up. ask for sunnier skies um, yes, for sure. But, for sure. you know, it was fun to do an event in wellies. I think we yes. should do that more. Yes. yes. My feet were very comfortable. Yes. <laughs> Mine were not because I didn't have wellies, but I will be all ready this year just in case for sure. So um, talk about some of the other things, like some of the challenges that you've had to overcome since you came aboard, because, you know, you have so much energy and passion. And I think the board that's assembled, as we talked about, is a, a powerhouse team of people and professionals. And it seems like it's a somewhat of an aggressive program because you can tell you're taking it very serious. And you're just on a mission. So what, what has been some obstacles your way? And one, one great thing that happened is that you are um, a benefactor this year for the um, Destin Charity Wine Auction. Yes. And I think that's a game changer for you as well. And that is going to just continue to broaden the, uh, the fundraising um, scale. And what else? What else can you tell us about it that, People could get involved in, I mean, more volunteers. It's, you know, it's, you're asking the million dollar question in some ways, or, you know, a million dollars would be wonderful. Yes. Um, Destin Charity Wine Auction, we've been long partners with, um, with them throughout, but their support has been instrumental in underwriting the operations of that preventative so we can stay steady there. Yeah. What we've really learned when you talk about the challenges is, as we've said earlier, the population's growing mm -hmm. and the need is growing. So even as we launched this restorative bus and this next program and we're working on mental health, it becomes daunting because right alongside it, you're receiving the statistics about school enrollment being up and additional enrollment forms and another school that, hey, could we fit in? Or, you know, we have families calling us that mm -hmm. might have a middle schooler or, you know, mm -hmm. you know, children that are in a school that we can't serve. We want to help everyone. Mm. Um, so you almost can't get away from like, could we bring this need in? Could we help with this too? Mm -hmm. um, one of the things about adding mental wellness, which I think was, you know, something that we felt passionate about, but couldn't find the best way to get our arms around. Um, and then COVID, I think, underlined that mm -hmm. lesson for families for sure, um, is that really this organization has always been about helping with healthy, happy kids, children's smiles. We want them to smile from the inside out. Um, so mental health and dental health running alongside each other are so important for the population we serve. You know, a strong community is as strong as our families, and we want to do everything we can to make that happen. Um, it can, we donations, come to our events, mm -hmm. volunteer, um, come and learn about ways that you can, you can help because we can use volunteers on our buses mm -hmm. that just help with the kids, help entertain mm -hmm. volunteers for our events. Um, this community is so giving. It is. Giving. Um, and I find that we'll, we'll find a way that someone can help be it a donation of time, supplies, you know, or, mm -hmm. or hopefully getting to enjoy soiree or one of our spring events. Right. We have 38 wine festival coming up. When is that? Um, that is the end of February. Okay. Um, we have then Destin charity wine auction. Um, we'll have a patron dinner. So there's a lot of things on our website, a lot of great events. If you want to enjoy that way or places that you can donate. And when is the patron dinner? Um, that is the end of April. And that's a Pescado. Yes. Right. Which yes. is going to be fun. Absolutely. I okay. It's going to be pretty fun too. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Very fun. So what is a typical day for you? Is it, are you manning the phones a lot? Are you talking to board members? Like I just know in one of the last meetings, you know, when I listened to, um, Aisha talk about like what her day was like, I just, I didn't even understand like how much was going into a minute by minute. It's not just a board and then you walk away and it doesn't run on automatic pilot. So are you fielding calls all day long? Are you moving, going out, helping, assisting? It just seems like there is so much going on. It takes every bit of anything you've accumulated in your past work life to fill the needs for a nonprofit. It's like there's an event coordinator hat because we've got three or four events. There's donations and thank yous and taking the time to extend gratitude. And um, I think there was a day that uh, last week where I said I felt a little schizophrenic. Like I went 
And there was a leadership forum where we were speaking with our new congressman about the need for the area. And then I delivered flowers to say thank you to a donor. And then, you know, came back in and you're on the phone figuring out how to order trash cans for soiree. Um, so yes. you're doing all of the things and really responding to the needs of the moment. Um, we are trying to build our referral network. So a great way that mm -hmm. um, health clinicians in our area can help is if their offices can support or offer services. So a lot of talk right now with dentists, healthcare professionals, vision professionals to say, how could you help and try to give them ways to, to support as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a very full, creative, interesting um, aspect around the offices for sure. Right. And we wear all of the hats. Yes. And that's why you have to have the passion for the mission and you have to have the energy and the enthusiasm of which you bring to the table as Everybody else on that board is, does as well. Absolutely. Yeah. We are, our team does it all. And um, even our, you know, our clinicians and our dental team, they are right there in there helping us with thank you yes. cards and filing paperwork. Yeah. And um, they they do anything that is needed. And yeah. it's a 24 seven job it sometimes. Is. It's selfless. So I'm grateful. Because you, you don't even, you haven't even met the kids that you're going to help, you know, on a given day, right? You know, you're, they're your future. You've helped past kids. So I just stand in awe at like, and I know it's real because I can feel it around the room when everyone's talking about it, that, you know, you're even like empathizing with someone you didn't even meet yet, but you know, they're out there and you want to help them. And I left that last board meeting really kind of quiet thinking about, um, the authenticity of it. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that I know we talked about in the last board meeting, and I think it's something that we've realized with our team is almost like the rite of passage, mm -hmm. is the idea that we put in a lot of children's hands, like their first toothbrush that is their own. And there's days that you get a little buried in the paperwork and mm -hmm. insurance and, you know, the, the minutia of mm -hmm. making this work. Mm -hmm. Um, but we've we've really each team member has shared that there are children that come on the bus mm -hmm. and our our newest dental assistant, Tiffany, on the last time I visited the clinic, she had shared that there was a little girl in first grade and she while we were teaching her like the hygiene and how to take care of her teeth. You know, well, here's your dental kit. And she's like, well, now, how long is this toothpaste going to last? Because. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, now mm -hmm. I'll get choked, but mm -hmm. my mom's food stamps got cut. So we've been out of toothpaste. I haven't been able to take care of my teeth. And mm -hmm. she wanted to share the toothpaste with her brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. um, so of course we made sure she went home with dental kits mm -hmm. for days. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I think that for this community, you know, taking a message home of we do, we do the cavities and the fillings mm -hmm. and, and the root canals, but we're also giving children yeah. their first toothbrush or their toothpaste that they have pride in. Yeah. ownership. Yeah. Um, I think that's something that weighs on my heart every single yeah. night. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for all the good you're doing. Well, I mean, really for giving us time to share. Yeah. That's really amazing. Well, I'm so glad that we've been able to catch up in our new capacities with one another. Your other one, when you used to pick out the best clothes in the world that I would buy your clothes. Well, oh my gosh, the best, the best clothing buyer ever, ever this girl right here. Um, but I think you're doing something Obviously. And we'll still figure out how to look cute for yeah. you. <laughs> we can do both. <laughs> yes, we can do both. Well, thank you so much. I look forward to serving with you uh, the rest of the year, too. Thank you. All right, thank Megan. You so thank much. you. Hello. Welcome back to part two of our CVHN interview. Megan gave us all the lowdown on the amazing good works that are going on with this nonprofit organization. I'm a proud member of the board, as I said earlier. And my guest right now is somebody that has inspired me. More than she'll ever know, and I left the last meeting that we had together, um, kind of like walking on cloud nine and smiling at the enthusiasm, the energy, and the absolute care that Dr. Aisha Cawthon has for her job, for her kids, kids that she met, kids that she's going to meet. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. I am so blessed to be here. Oh my gosh. Thanks. I just think you are, you're, you're. You exude so much happiness and life and light and energy. You just are not a normal person. You're the best and in, in the best <laughs> sense of being a good person. Well, and I will take that compliment. And I think it is a too high of a compliment coming from you because you are amazing. <laughs> and I would one day like to emulate you and all your graciousness. So. Oh, thank you. You're yeah, so sweet. Yeah. Um, 
So you just took the job fairly recently. Was it in the last six months or less? So yes. So I started June 1st. June 1st was my official start date. I worked a little bit behind the scenes because as you know, we just received our new mobile dental clinic, which is a which is my baby, the one the one that I ride on predominantly. And in getting the clinic, there were so many things that we had to do behind the scenes before we received it. So I started a little bit early. But yeah. Okay. And so one thing I know is that you had numerous job offers to work in, let's call it conventional um, dental. Dentistry, yeah. Yeah, dentistry. And how did you choose this nonprofit over all of the offers that you had? It's so interesting um, reflecting on that time. And you're looking for the right opportunity. And, and when you're in that flux of saying, like, where am I going to plant my seed? Where can I leave a legacy behind? Um, and do the most good for another person. I uh, found so many opportunities with wonderful private practices offices, actually not just in the Northwest Florida region, but even going as far as the East Coast of Florida. And um, the private practitioners would offer me so much mentorship and um, just the opportunity to see so many patients and, and do wonderful things for them. But I was finding that there was this kind of a gap in patients that may not have insurance or patients that may not be able to afford dental care or patients that might be on state insurance. And um, one of the last opportunities that I had, um, a private practitioner office explained to me why that that wasn't, um, why those types of patients would not be able to be seen in in many dental practices across Florida. And I, it just kind of gutted me at that moment because I realized that every patient needs and deserves quality care. And coming from another state where state insurance is taken very regularly, I was one of the providers that stood in the gap for a child that needed care but may not be able to afford care. And I wanted to continue that here. And I Googled volunteering in the area because I was like, with my interim, like, well, I'm looking for a job. I'm going to volunteer and I'm going to get back to this community that I just arrived in. And and I loved it. It's a, it's a wonderful place to live, Florida. Like, it's truly, it's been a blessing. And I've stumbled across CVHN and I found that you were hiring and I was like, let's check it out. Let's throw a fishing line and see what, what, what's, what do they have to offer? And, um, I kind of found that CVHN was exactly what I was looking for. They originated from a group of women who said, I see a need. And rather than pointing fingers at why there was a problem or kind of passing along the problem to another organization, they said, no, I'm going to stand in the gap and I'm going to help this child. And then after helping one child, they decided to not stop and help more children. And I love that. That's something that I gravitate towards is when someone says, let me do something for someone else. And I interviewed and I was still kind of in that. Should I take the job? Should I take the position? Should I not? And I was kind of just reflecting on like, when I die, I'm, I'm religious. So when I die and I get to heaven, how am I going to stand before God and God say, hey, what did you do for the least of these? Like, what did you do with the talents and gifts I gave you? And I, I couldn't come up with a good excuse of why I wouldn't take the job. Like, I couldn't come up with a good excuse of like, this was more important than helping a child that you created, right? Mm-hmm. And um, around that same time, Miss Jane mm-hmm. called me and said, hey, we're praying for you. And I was like, this is it. Here we are. And wow. that is how CVHN got me. Wow. <laughs> how I landed here. Uh, that's uh, Destiny. Sounds like it was totally meant to be, and we're also the better for it because the energy and enthusiasm and love that you have for these kids, like I said, kids you don't even know yet you have love for, is just like, um, you know, it's very um, a God thing. Um, My mantra and everything that I do in my life is to live by this one golden rule that when I die, that God says to me, well done, my good and faithful servant. So okay. I have a servant's heart too, even though it doesn't, you know, my, my, the trappings of what I do in magazine and publishing and, and whatnot, um, might not like seem like a ministry per se, but I'm still, um, able to help people tell good stories and tell good news and, and bring good news. And so that is what I do too. So I can totally appreciate that. Well, I definitely did not, I would never say anything other than this is definitely a ministry. You are able to connect individuals to individuals who can help support whatever it is they're doing. 
And without you, without donors, without the board pouring into us, we can't pour into other people. So I think what you do is wonderful. Thank and you. I love the trappings. I wish I could live here. <laughs> I mean, hey, I might need you to come hang out with me sometimes okay. so I could just learn how to do this. But um, truly, I am I'm very appreciative of how you are allowing me to spread the word on my kiddos. Mm, so thank so you great. for that. Well, I don't know if you can remember some of the stories that you were telling in our last board meeting, but like, just like, can you recount some of your most heartwarming stories that you met these kids and what, what they tell you and and what it means to you? Sure. One story comes to mind and it really hits the heart was a little boy and he was in first grade at not this last school I was at, but the school before. And it's honestly, the level of decay had gotten to such an extent that I looked into his mouth and I saw inside of multiple teeth. I saw the nerve of v- probably about three or four teeth. And I knew that little boy was in pain. And I sprayed some air so I could see a little bit better. And many teeth started bleeding. And as a clinician, when you see that level of, an, of extent of decay, you know that little boy is in pain. And you know it affects so much of his life. He can't sleep throughout the night without pain. He can't eat without pain. He can't drink a glass of cold water without pain. And he certainly can't sit at school all day and concentrate without thinking about his teeth and something hurting him. You also look at it from the point of interacting with peers. The level of decay that he had was visibly evident to other children around him. Is he getting bullied? Does he have the confidence to go up to a group of people and make friends? Does he have the confidence to carry himself with the pride he should as a little boy? And I began talking to him a little bit about it. And he was telling me how big and brave and strong he was and that he wasn't any pain and it would be okay. And at that age, he should not have to do that. That should not be something that should even be on his realm of concerns of, hey, I have a toothache, but it's going to be okay. We as CVHN want to make sure that no child gets into this um, position of this amount of pain. And if there is a child in this position, how can we make sure that this A, never happens again, and B, what can we do to restore his health so he can live a happy, healthy life? Unbelievable. I know. I went around the corner and I really cried. I had to lock the clinic doors. And I said, Tiffany, my assistant, I was like, give us five minutes while I have a little big girl cry. So how much care will he need that he needs so much restoration, right? Yes, he does. He needs a lot of restoration. And when you look at a child that young, you have to say, how am I going to treat this child in a way that he wants to come back to the dentist in the Mm -hmm. future? Mm -hmm. So sometimes we can do it on the bus with nitrous gas. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to refer kiddos Mm -hmm. out to sedation. Mm -hmm. Um, But he does need, and he got care yeah. and he got yeah. what he needed. And that okay. was what's important. But, um, mm-hmm. that's another thing that I w- wanted to really say is I'm so proud of these kids. Some mm-hmm. of these kids have never seen a dentist before mm-hmm. and they sit for four extractions and <sighs> silver caps and white color fillings. And they're sitting for all this with laughing gas at school. So you have to look at it from another element, another perspective and mm-hmm. say, Hey, I'm proud of CVHN, but I'm also proud of these kiddos that are big and brave and are sitting in this chair handling procedures that a lot of adults may not be able to do. Right. So when you look at it from that perspective, I'm every time a child comes through the doors, I always want to make sure, A, that they have the most positive experience that we can give them Mm -hmm. because I really want to lay the foundation and groundwork for them to really not be afraid of the dentist in the future and to really look at the dentist as an exciting trip Mm -hmm. and B, make sure that they get all the care that they need. So we're not leaving them in an element of, Hey, you still have urgency that you're going to need to probably get antibiotics for, or, you know, you're at a risk for a dental emergency when I'm not there. So Mm -hmm. that really is something that I don't have a lot of time Mm -hmm. at every school. Mm -hmm. And I have to maximize that. Mm -hmm. I have to say, Hey, which kids are the most urgent, which are the urgent and which can I kind of say, Mm -hmm. this can be wait, you know, this can be kind of put in a pile of, let's treat it with something else in the interim and then come back the next year, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. Yeah. Because in our, stages. Exactly, mm-hmm. in stages. Because we, I know Megan mentioned, we have nine schools right. and we have a school year to get through them. Mm-hmm. And the school day isn't like a private practice day. If you think about private practice, they're open at what time? 7.30 and they close at 5 sometimes. Mm-hmm. 
well, I can only be on the school grounds when school is happening. Mm -hmm. And I have to make sure that these kiddos get home on the bus. Mm -hmm. So they come on the bus sometimes, they leave on the bus sometimes. So I have like maybe a 7.30 to 2 o'clock window that I'm seeing all these kids in. Mm. So it's more of a lot of logistics along with dentistry that is something that's unique. And it's just, it puts an, it puts a nice spin on my day. Really, it sure it really does. does. Wow. It does. Well, you know, I'm a big fan and I think we are so blessed to have you. And so is our entire community. And I can speak for myself that I'm glad you made the decision to join forces with, um, CVHN and Jane Barr, I know is super happy to have you there too, as is as everybody else. And, um, I'm, you impressed me. Oh, well, you impressed me. And so Jane, Miss Jane, she's the one who called me and said, she's... I, I was praying and I was like, listen, that's all the, that is all of the kind of, yes. um, that's sign. all I need. That's all the sign I need. Was Someone's praying for me yeah. to be here. Oh, so, wow. wow. Yeah. Well, I look forward to continuing our relationship as well. Thank for you sure. so much. Thank you, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this. I know I did. They're, they are two inspiring women, as is the entire organization and board of CVHN. Think about donating or volunteering time in the future because this is truly a worthwhile cause. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day. Bye.